Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never ran to the no man, I still go Go, go I hustle every single day I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave To the system, I don't wanna be a slave I've been doing shit my way uh, Or the highway And in the driveway Is a nice range Cause I grind through the climb I invite pain You never hear me, bitch Nah, I don't complain Just gotta flip the switch And you can go and obtain Anything you want Anything you need Your mind's got the key ingredient It's belief uh, They'll see with the negativity But I just slide right we built a new flight computer over the last half year or so, with the name C1. C1 took us around 120 hours to design and it turned out great. It will provide us with many possibilities we never had for the upcoming landing attempts and maybe also for the upcoming launch and landing attempts. In this video, I will guide you through all the features this flight computer offers. First. I will talk about the power supply, then I will show you all sensors and features this flight computer offers. I will continue by giving you an overview about all the outputs and last I will give you some general information about this flight computer. So first let's talk about the power supply. This flight computer is intended to be powered by a free cell LiPo battery which normally has a voltage of around 11.1 volts. As long as the battery has a XT60 plug, it can be attached instantly. So now we have power on the board, but we need to regulate it, because sensors use a voltage of around 5 volts and 3.3 volts we have implemented two regulation circuits. For the 5 volt regulation we use a back converter circuit and for the 3.3 volt regulation we use a normal linear voltage regulator. To turn on and off the flight computer we don't interrupt the 12 volt power supply but instead turn off and on the 5 volt back converter. Therefore the switch doesn't have to withstand as much current as it would have to otherwise. Both 3.3 and 5 volt voltage levels are indicated by a status LED. The internal switch can be bridged by an external switch for better accessibility. So I think this is all you need to know about the power supply of this PCB. Now let's move on with all the features and sensors this PCB offers. As an inertial measurement unit or IMU, this PCB uses a BMI 088 from Bosch. This sensor comes with many benefits such as high robustness, high accuracy and much more, but like everything, it also has its drawbacks. It was pretty pretty difficult to solder but in the end we got it done and now we have a perfect IMU sitting on this PCB. This sensor will be used to measure the angle of the rocket in all three degrees through the internal accelerometers and gyroscopes. For all of you that don't know what gyroscopes or accelerometers are, I will link you a video in which they are described. For a successful launch and landing, we also need altitude measurements, so the height above the ground. We gather these measurements through a radar which will be connected to the pins of this PCB and we support this uh, radar by two barometric pressure sensors. The first one is the BMP390 which we can see on the top of the PCB and a backup will be the BMP388. In order to guard a full position control, 
this is the first flight computer that offers the possibility to add a GPS module. The circuit supporting the GPS module is basically the same as that of Sparkfun Electronics. So the plan is to buy a Sparkfun Electronics GPS module, desolder all the components and solder them onto this board and then everything should work. The GPS module also has its own backup battery slot. Through this backup battery, a hot start of the GPS module is even possible when the flight computer was turned off for 3 or 4 hours. If you don't know what hot start means, no problem, you can check out this video. The last sensor of this PCB isn't really a sensor, but it comes in also very handy a real-time voltage measurement circuit. This circuit is basically a voltage divider with a Xenodiode to protect the microcontroller. This measurement is very helpful because we don't want to launch with a too low battery and through this circuit the microcontroller can put out an error flag if this would be the case. So now we have a lot of sensors that put out a lot of data but they can't do anything on their own. So we need a brain. And the brain of this PCB is the microcontroller TNC 4.1. This microcontroller PGRC developed is a beast. It uses an ARM Cortex M7 processor at 600 MHz. And it houses a lot of GPIO pins. Additionally, it has a internal SD card on which we can save all the flight data without further efforts. This powerhouse is able to run our code around 1000 times per second which is more than enough for our usage here. So that's all about the sensors we use so now let's talk about the outputs. Indication wise this PCB offers an RGB LED and an SMD buzzer. They are all controlled by a low side driver IC in order to protect the microcontroller. Through the implemented radio module the data we gather through flight could also be live transferred and a drop test could be remotely controlled. C1 has a lot of output pins such as 3 servo outputs, 2 for the TVC and 1 for the shoot, 1 reaction wheel output two outputs for run cams in order to gather good onboard footage and all the not used pins of the microcontroller and sensors. The most important output pins of all are of course the pyro channels. C1 features six of them. Pyro channels are designed to easily trigger heating wires and igniters while not destroying their internal electronics. The power channel C1 has are even more special. They are the first I ever created that offer a status LED. This status LED will help us know if the power channel is turned on or off. All the LEDs you can see on this board and some additional features can be turned off manually by desoldering the according solder bridge. Now it's time for the last point of this video. Some general infos about this PCB. The dimensions of the circuit board are 95 by 80 millimeters. It is a four layer PCB with 1.6 millimeters thickness. It almost unexceptionally uses surface mount components to make the PCB more compact. The arrangement of the components is similar to that of BPS Space Flight Computer AVA with all the active and important components on the top side and all the passive and backup components on the back side. We ordered the assembly service for the back side of the PCB so we had only to solder the top side. This is probably the most complex flight computer we ever designed. It will take us some time to get this thing operational, but if we eventually do, this flight computer will offer us many possibilities we never had before. 
If you want to know any specific bit of information about this flight computer, simply ask in the comments. This is all from me, thanks for watching this video and I will see you next time.